And this evening's discussion is going to fit the season, which is the winter solstice. And we'll start from an astral astronomical perspective. Astronomically, the winter solstice occurred on Monday, December 21st at 5.02 Eastern Standard Time. We often think of the winter solstice as an event that spans an entire calendar day, but the solstice actually lasts only a moment. Specifically, it's the exact moment when, a hem when the hemisphere is tilted as far away from the sun as it can be. That said, the day is the same length, nine hours and five minutes from December, December 17th through the 25th. On the 20th and 21st, the sun rises and sets at the same time. The word solstice comes from the Latin words for sun and to stand still. A few days before and after the winter solstice, the change in dawn and dusk is so slight that the sun's path seems to stay the same or stand still. The sun is directly overhead at high noon on the winter solstice at the Tropic of Capricorn. It is the astronomical beginning of winter in the Northern Hemisphere. From a cultural perspective, the shortest day of the year represents a time of wonder and awe. It is a time of darkness in which we bring light into our lives. This has been recognized at least since Neolithic times. As an observed astronomical event, it is transcultural. Many cultures signify it by lighting of lights. Because it is so elemental to humanity, it has been codified into religious and secular rituals. I'll provide a brief, brief potpourri of some of the observances that have started very early. The first are the Mayans. To the ancient Maya, this noteworthy day was a time to contemplate the blessings that were sure to come as spring arrived. The winter solstice symbolized the renewal of life and was celebrated because every successive day to come in the season would be longer than, last, than the last. John May, Major Jenkins commented that the winter solstice, quote, meant more than the birth of a new solar year. It meant the beginning of a great cycle of time, the resetting of the great celestial clock of precession, and perhaps an unprecedented, unprecedented shift in the nature of human consciousness and civilization. The Zoroastrians, by comparison, the celebration of the winter solstice is a Zoroastrian sacred rite. In the Zoroastrian sacred lore, the winter solstice, referred to as Yalda, symbolizes the defeat of darkness and gloom in the moment when all hope has faded. It is in this exact moment that the invincible sun, the energy of light, brilliance, triumphs over sorrow and sadness. Despite recent assertions, the ancient Roman Mithraists considered themselves, cons themselves were convinced that their religion, the religion of Sol Invictus or the invisible sun was founded by none other than the prophet of the ancient Indo-Europeans, Zarathustra. The Germanic peoples, Known as Yule, the celebration commemorated the events of the waning year and honored gods with a festival of song, food, drink, and sacrifice. But with the steady, steady spread of Christianity throughout Europe, many pagan beliefs and celebrations, including Yule, were stamped out. Today, hints of those ancient faiths and rituals of the Vikings can be found in some of the most popular Christian Christmas traditions. 
This is the story of Yule, the Viking winter festival that helped create the modern Christmas celebration. The earliest mention of Yule is found in the work of the chronicler and prolific historian called Bide, an English monk who was instrumental in the spread of Catholic Christianity in Northern England. And let's look at some other major cultural observances. And we'll start with Diwali. This is a festival of light that celebrates the triumph of light over dark and good over evil and the blessings of victory, freedom, and enlightenment. This is celebrated earlier than the solstice itself, but it demonstrates the importance of this time of the year when the sun's light is fading. Diwali is primarily celebrated by followers of the Hindu, Sikh, and Jain faiths. The holiday is celebrated throughout India, Singapore, and several other South Asian countries as a national holiday and by the entire South Asian diaspora. The most recent festival that we have is Kwanzaa. Hold on a second. I'm missing Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa is a celebration that started in the 1970s for African Americans, and it's celebrated also for eight days, and it is punctuated by the lighting of lights each night. And we have Hanukkah. And Hanukkah is also referred to as the Feast of the Maccabees. And this was a period of time with the second coming, the second temple, in which the temple itself did not have sufficient light to keep the lamps lit in the temple. But there was a miracle, and the lamps were lit for eight days, hence the lighting of the Kanaga menorah, each of eight nights. And finally, I'll refer to Christmas, and I don't think I have to tell too many people about Christmas, but just to remind people that Christmas was actually a period of time, we don't know when Jesus was born, but I believe it was in the fourth century. I don't have my notes on this. I've lost a whole page of notes. Um, I believe it was in the fourth century that the Roman church decided to celebrate this on the solstice, which was the Roman tradition. The solstice in Buddhism. There is no direct reference to solstice in the Buddhist text, at least that I'm aware of. However, in East Asia, East Asian Buddhism, the synchrony of Buddhism, Taoism, and in Japan, Shinto results in a celebration in several ways. There are multiple ways that the solstice is observed in East Asia, and specifically, you'll find that in this context, Buddhism is influenced by Taoism. Well, let's go back and explore the connections in Japan. Culturally, this is an important time. The winter solstice is called Ichiyu Daihuku or Toji in Japanese meaning the turning point from yin and yang. Yin and yang are the complementary principles of Taoist philosophy. It also means the day of the return of spring, when winter is gone and spring comes. Also from the yin and yang paradigms, the masculine yang is now fully transformed into the feminine yin. The equinox is the most yin day of the year. And most people aren't aware that yin is the feminine principle and yin is symbolized by winter, and yang, the masculine, is symbolized by summer. And then autumn and spring, you find 
the masculine turning into yin or the yin turning into the yang. And then at the winter solstice is the most yin day of the year and the summer solstice is the most yang day of the year. From a more folk perspective, yuzu o huror is customary. This is intended to help ward off kaze, cold and flu during the coming year. And those fruits you see floating in the water are yuzu. Um, some of you may have had yuzu as part of a, a Japanese, uh, part of Japanese cooking. It's a, similar to a lemon. Uh, it does have a distinct flavor, however. And so it's traditional that in the daily bath, uh, that most Japanese take, they would be using yuzu in the bath. And as I said, it's to ward off the kaze, which is cold or flu for the coming year. In Shinto, in Japan, the Shinto legend of Amaterasu is celebrated at this time of the year. Amaterasu hid herself in a cave. She's the um, primary goddess in the Shinto uh, legends and myths. And she hid herself in a cave after being deeply insulted and leaving the universe in complete darkness and chaos. The other gods begged her to emerge, but it was only after the goddess of mirth, Amano Uzume, hung a mirror on a tree and performed an erotic dance outside the cave that the laughter of the other gods made Amaterasu peep out from the cave with curiosity. The sun goddess caught a glimpse of her reflection in the mirror and was so startled that the other gods were able to pull her out and convince her to return to the sky, thus returning light and order to the world. Her return to the sky is celebrated on the winter solstice, the 21st of December in Japan. So the, the solstice is by custom the darkest day of the year and filling the environment with light as a means to ward off the darkness, taking hope for spring or hope, bringing hope to spring. The promise of days filled with radiance and a metaphor for a better life. And if we deal with Amida Nyorai, or the Amida Buddha, is the Buddha of immeasurable light and often celebrated at this time of the year. Amida Buddha is the Buddha of boundless light and life, one of immeasurable and infinite qualities. Amida Nyorai presides over the Western paradise. When a disciple dies, it is believed that Amida descends from his paradise to lead the faithful back to the pure land. And Amida is the central deity of Japan's popular Pure Land or Jodo and Jodo Shinshu religions. Amida is also a member of the Buddha family that oversees the winter solstice, shining his light onto us as optimism, brightness, and clarity. So what about what's happening at Tendai Buddhist Institute? Well, the solstice tree is lit in the gathering room. The menorah has been lit. And the hondo is lit. So at TBI, we've done all the lighting that we can do for, this, for the end of this year. In conclusion, winter solstice is a period that touches humanity. It is not specific to a particular religious observance, cultural or naturalist affiliation. It is a seasonal celebration that recognizes the dark days that occur in our lives and provides hope and promise for better days to come through the symbol of lights. And these are the sources that I used for this presentation.
I'm going to unmute everyone for a moment. Okay. Are there any thoughts or comments, questions, et cetera? Nothing, huh? You left us speechless, Reverend Munchin. <laughs> <laughs> Happy well, holidays. Why don't you think for a minute? I'll be right back. I, okay. I, wanted, to, I wanted to suggest that if we look at the um, resonance of the, this darkest moment and the time in this world, <clears throat> there's an interesting uh, uh, co uh, correlation. Uh, certainly the way things have been happening but in terms of COVID, in terms of um, things in Washington, this is where it's a moment of great darkness, but it also seems like the darkness, the light is coming. It really does seem like this moment is a moment in which things are shifting. Uh, and so who knows? Also, let me just remark that we know that the uh, uh, the convergence, the virtual convergence of Jupiter and Saturn happened, ha is happening now. And uh, people mm -hmm. say that it's the, it was called the star of Bethlehem, that it happened 800 years ago. And it also no, supposedly happened it three didn't times. Happen. Didn't happen. <laughs> it, it, no, not that, not that exact climb, but apparently it happened yeah. three times within seven years of the supposed birth of Christ. And it, the last time it happened was eight, 800 years ago. But it did happen apparently three times in those seven years. But it is a, an interesting moment um, at this point in terms of darkness and the bringing on of light. So there's, we're all kind of in this together, I think, it seems. Well, tell the clouds to go away so we can see it. Right. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> <think loud yet. laughs> You know, I was, I was going to mention that um, as, a, as a master of mysteries, I was going to part the clouds but nobody could be here to join me, so I decided I, I wouldn't bother this year. <laughs> yeah, we'll just we'll all watch it on the U on YouTube. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to move us along. Hold on a moment. Let me say one thing. I think because of uh, the COVID and where people have been in the last nine months and everything. This is like the darkest time that most of them have gone through. And just remember that, that sometime in the future, you look back and, and remember this time as being, you know, unusual in a bad sense and we'll get over it. I think I think you're right. I think that that this is a period that um, will go down in the history books as a dark year. I'm going to once again mute everyone. Oh yes, I'll once again mute everyone, and we're going to move things along. <clears throat> At the outset of this Dharma talk, I would like to mention that putting together the evening's discussion was fun. I'm not sure it was fun for everybody who was listening, but it was for me. Half of my teaching, research, and academic interests were with the synthesis of human biology and social interaction. Often this took the form of medical and epidemiological research, but there was always that interaction between human biology and our humanity that I found most interesting. And nowhere do we see it more than in, event, than in events such as this winter solstice. <laughs> For instance, we know that people have seasonal affective disorder that leads them to clinical depression. As the days grow shorter, especially for people in the northern climes, the cold has caused their bodies to adapt or acclimate to the temperature and humidity. The people in the southern climes don't adapt or acclimate to. This discussion also reminds me that human beings cross culturally and transgeographically 
respond in similar fashion to the same environmental stresses. I really wish that during these times of social polarization, we could all come together and recognize that simple, simple premise. Many years ago, ago, I used a book by David Darling titled Zen Physics for a course I taught on death as a biosocial process. There's a quote he used in the book that seemed to be especially appropriate for today. Human beings have reached what may well be a pivotal stage in their evolution. They have been created by the universe, in the universe, as an integral part of the universe. They have passed through a difficult period when their strong day-to-day -day experience of selfhood and their cultural conditioning have made them feel detached from the reality in which they are permanently embedded. And now they are beginning to see beyond the self again into the truth of their conditioning. It fascinates me that the winter solstice brings about a period of time this year from December 17th through the 25th in which there is daylight the same period of time each of the nine days. At this latitude, it happens to be nine hours and five minutes. Thus, we have 15 hours of darkness. Then after that ninth day, we begin to increase the amount of light by between 30 seconds to two minutes each day until we reach the summer. The summer solstice, at which time the light and dark are reversed, so we have a little over 18 hours of sunlight. I can feel it in my body, can you? My sleep pattern is different, my eating pattern is different, my activity level, my metabolism. This replicates the seasonality that we see in nature around us. The cycle of bears in hibernation, birds in migration, the fish, the trees, all the natural world around us. To me, this affirms that observation by David Darling that I read. One can read Shakyamuni Buddha, Nagarjuna, Chi Gi, Chan Jan, Sai Cho, and so many others who tell us this, and we read it, probably believe it, and then we go about our lives as though the self that we perceive is separate from nature, from the Buddha nature in which we are a part. Use this period of long days evolving toward the light to not merely understand this basic reality, but to manifest it with each breath each moment to all sentient beings. And if you'll bear with me, I would like to conclude by reading the Metta Sutra. And it goes like this. That is what should be done by one who is skilled in goodness and who knows the path of peace. Let them be able and upright, straightforward and gentle in speech, humble and not conceited, contented and easily satisfied unburdened with duties and frugal in their ways, peaceful and calm and wise and skillful, not proud and demanding in nature. Let them not do the slightest thing that the wise would later reprove, wishing in gladness and in safety, may all beings be at ease. Whatever living being there may be, whether they are weak or strong, omitting none, the great or the mighty, medium, short, or small, the seen and the unseen, those living near and far away, those born and to be born, may all beings be at ease. Let none deceive another or despise any being in any state. Let none through anger or ill will wish harm upon another, even as a mother protects with her life, her child, her only child, so with a boundless heart should one cherish all living beings, radiating kindness over the entire world, spreading upward to the skies and downward to the depths, outward and unbounded, freed from hatred and ill will, whether standing or walking, seated or lying down, free from drowsiness, one should sustain this recollection. That is said to be sublime abiding. And the quote this evening is, this we know, the earth does not belong to human, humans belong to the earth. This we know, all things are connected, like the blood which unites one family, 
all things are connected. Whatever befalls the earth befalls the children of the earth. Humans do not weave the web of life. They are merely a strand in it. Whatever they do to the web, they do to themselves. And this was by Chief Seal. He was also referred to as Chief Seattle. Closing statement for this evening. We start in autumn with Diwali, which symbolizes the spiritual victory of light over darkness, good over evil, and knowledge over ignorance. Then there's Thanksgiving, a time which is, pers which is a personal gratitude and a time of giving, a time of being together, whether in fact or virtual. And we go forward to Shakyamuni Buddha's Awakening Day on December 8th. Hanukkah, winter solstice, Christmas, and Kwanzaa follow in rapid succession. We complete this cycle of observances on New Year's Eve and day. We should embrace this cycle that occurs as the light seems to go out and we challenge the darkness by bringing light into our lives, both figuratively and literally. Accept everyone's wish of Sub Diwali or Happy Diwali, Hanukkah Sameach, Merry Christmas, Habare Gani, a swa swa Swahili phrase meaning what is the news, and Happy New Year's in Japanese, Akimashite Merito Gozaimasu, with joy, gratitude, and humility. Please keep in mind that next week is New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. And so rather than meeting on Wednesday evening, we will be meeting at Thursday night at 7 p.m. You'll receive the link the same way, demonstrate, showing you what time it is. I want to thank you for joining us this evening, and I wish everyone a good evening. And I'll unmute everyone briefly so that you can say ciao, y'all. Good night. Have a great night and week, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Good night, you too. Happy holidays. Hey. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy, Happy, holidays. Holidays. Happy holidays, everybody. Peace. Good day. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> and I don't know if you can see that. It says, Yes, I'm a Buddha. And the woman's kicking him and saying, Don't be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Go in peace yeah. and enjoy yeah. in place. I like that. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.